The only way you can even fail gloriously is to attempt something glorious. That forces me to work my ass off and attempt things glorious. Are you willing to go all in and have the chance of failing gloriously? Welcome to the Spinoso Podcast. I am Alex Spinoso, and guys, I'm going to get right into it today. How many times in your life has the fear of failure kept you from actually taking action? Well, the reality is the fear of failure can lead to the greatest failure of all, which is doing nothing. The what if has killed more dreams than actually jumping in with both feet and doing the damn thing ever would. So how about you? Maybe you were in high school and wanted so badly to ask out the homecoming queen, but it didn't happen. Maybe you were just out of college and wanted to start a business you were passionate about, but it didn't happen. Maybe you're listening to this now and you have some huge goal or dream, but you have done exactly nothing because you're afraid of failure. You know that famous quote by Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It's so well known, it's gotten cliche, but it's true and it's powerful. As frightened as you might be by failure, you should be more frightened by the greatest failure, which is to do nothing. There's a story where a nurse interviewed multiple people on their deathbeds and she asked them, what were their top five regrets in life? And most of them, Their number one regret was that they didn't truly do what they wanted to. They didn't make the decisions that they actually wanted to. They wished that they did more and experienced more. I told my med students all the time, and now I tell my team all the time, if you're going to fail, make sure you fail gloriously. What I mean is that I want to encourage people to take initiative. I want them to try hard. I want them to try their best. I want them to back that decision up with as much data as they possibly fucking can. I want them to crawl out on the limb and do something crazy in the name of passion, courage, and innovation. I want them to madly embrace risk. I want them to do that so that they grow as people. We grow as a company, we help people, and we make a shit ton of money doing it. You have to be uncomfortable in order to grow, and I want my staff forced into being uncomfortable. I learned from Andy Frisella that you never discipline your team for taking an action that might end up having a negative result. As long as that action was driven and guided by your company's core values, I will never punish somebody for swinging for the fences. I won't ever criticize someone for trying something audacious and insanely gutsy. There has to be some thought put into it, however. There has to be a good motive behind it. It has to be consistent with our company's core values. But if all that's true, the attitude I want my team to embrace is fucking go for it. Armchair quarterbacks are going to criticize football coaches for, quote, living and dying by the big play. When they do that, they show how ignorant they are at what it takes to build a winning culture. Should you drill your team in the fundamentals? Get them to master the little things? Of course. But if you're not instilling in your team a willingness to fearlessly run a big play again and again, even after the last play went down in flames, well, you might win games, but you'll never, ever win championships. Let me give you three quick reasons you should be willing to fail gloriously. If you failed gloriously, it means that you attempted something glorious. The average person is so. So, so fucking negative nowadays. They might rip on a quarterback who performs poorly in a Super Bowl, or they might rip on the guy on Instagram that's giving out money to homeless people and filming it. How easily you forget 
the fact that the dude actually brought his team to the Super Bowl or that other dude is actually giving money to the homeless that they themselves aren't doing. They're not taking their teams to the Super Bowl and they're not giving money to the homeless. They're sitting behind an Instagram feed, scrolling, making fun of everybody else. That football quarterback was only able to fail gloriously because he actually achieved the glorious goals of making it to the most important game on the planet. That Instagram influencer that was giving money to the homeless person obviously had some sort of platform or crowdsourcing that allowed him to raise that money and give it away. So the news and media is going to rip on him. The social media idiots who never played a game in their lives nor gave a dollar to a single homeless person are going to rip on them. Maybe the quarterback goes down in the stat history as playing a bad game. He'll look bad publicly for a while. The social media influencer will have stories written about him, about how he's trying to gain clout on the internet. Yep, those are the consequences of failing gloriously. So what? One's in the fucking NFL and one's donating money to the homeless. Neither are bad. And guess what? You're not either of those. He gets paid millions of dollars. You don't. He gets to be in the spotlight, in the arena. You never will if you aren't willing to fail gloriously. You get what I'm saying? The only way you can even fail gloriously is to attempt something glorious. So if you're not attempting something glorious on a regular basis, why are you expecting to be successful in your business? What are you even doing with your life? Number two, failing gloriously means that you took massive action, and massive action is essential for success. Put another way, what I'm saying is that timid actions get marginal results. Half-hearted actions make negligible progress, and very often in business and in life, if you want to substantially move the needle, you have to do something to stimulate the fuck out of it. This is why I am always pushing the envelopes in my businesses. All of them. This is why every dollar I make, I turn around and shove it right back into the business or out to an asset that is going to grow my money or increase the business's ability to make money. Because when I look at my bank account, it's dropped back down my level of comfort and it puts me into crisis mode. Where if something goes wrong, I'm in trouble. That forces me to work my ass off and attempt things glorious. But that's what it takes for me to create something glorious. Massive action. The results of massive action can be failing gloriously. But that's part of the deal. Are you willing to take massive action in your personal life? Are you willing to do that in your business? Are you willing to do that to achieve your goals, to actually get to see your dreams come true? Charlie Munger, before he died, one of the greatest phrases that he ever talked about when it came to investing is that a person has only two to three opportunities to put 80% or more of their net worth into a deal their entire lives. And those deals are what make or break legends. Are you willing to go all in? and have the chance of failing gloriously. The final reason you want to fail gloriously is that failing gloriously is where the greatest lessons are learned. Think about that logically. If you tell your kid not to get near the hot stove, and they do, and a tiny drop of hot water bubbles out of the saucer hits their arm, it's going to hurt, but not that much. They might learn their lesson, they might not. But if they get close to the hot stove and they actually put their hand on the range and burn the shit out of it, they're going to learn their lesson, right? Absolutely. Remember the old saying, no pain, no gain? Well, it's also true. The more pain you can endure, the more knowledge and experience you're going to gain. The entrepreneur, the business owner, the mother, the father, who wins in life is the one who is willing to get uncomfortable and to go through the pain. 
the greater the consequences of the mistake, the more you are going to learn about what to do and what not to do in business and in life. And I'm not going to lie, failing miserably hurts. And it's going to hurt bad. It might hurt you, your family, your wallet, your colleagues, your employees. But it is that hurt and pain that is going to break you down and make you stronger. With all that being said, listen, I get it. Nobody wants to fail. It hurts the ego. It hurts in a lot of different ways. And most people cannot fucking stand it. But you have to retrain your mind. It is 100% true that there is something worse than failure. And that is doing nothing at all. If you do nothing at all, you'll always regret it. If you do nothing at all, you'll never learn the lessons nor gain the experience that will make you better. If you do nothing at all, it means that you never tried anything truly glorious. It means you never attempted to live a great life. That's the ultimate failure. I don't want to live that way. Do you?